Welcome back, folks, to the Get a Grip on Lighting podcast. Today we have veteran Tony Lawrence of Light Rider. That's lightriderinc.com. We're going to get into a conversation with him. Ooh, it's going to be fun for sure. There's some, you know, where's Edward Snowden? Is he around here somewhere? We're getting into the NSA. <laughs> but before we go there, we got to talk about the other side of all that, the gangsters of lighting, Satco. Go to satco.com. Greg, they do the light thing. They do the right thing. That's right. With their starfish system, you have A-lamp, R-lamp, PAR-lamp, MR-16, string light, tape lighting, all of it's RGB, uh, color tunable, changeable with an app. And we're going to talk about this today. It's secure, direct Wi-Fi connection um, and multi-users, multi-settings. So check that out. Got to check out Starfish, always ready, always hot. Sacco coming out with great products. And of course, the National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors. That's right. Go to NAILD dot, uh, NAILD.org, folks. That's right. Get educated, get associated. But for right now, Tony Lawrence, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Good. Doing great. Greg, you want to you want to fire start this one up here? This is a fun one. Yeah, you know, so uh, we look a little before our, our shows and kind of figure out what you're about. But this one caught me off as a surprise right here. The first thing in your LinkedIn profile, recruited by the NSA at the age of 17, Tony was a first cyber warrior for the U.S. Army. Tell us about that. That's Tell correct. That. <laughs> so um, I joined the agency when I was 17. I um I got recruited by the Army originally um, right after the Twin Towers fell. So as soon as the Twin Towers fell, I was about 16 years old in high school and I realized that I wanted to protect my country. So I enlisted at needs of the Army, which was infantry, and I tested very well, very high. And um, when I was a junior in high school, that's when I went to basic training, came back from basic training, finished up my uh, my degree, my high school degree. And then I joined the NSA when I was 17. Wow. <laughs> you accomplished a lot quick. Where, where are you from? What area? So I was born in Florida, um, but I joined the agency here at Fort Meade, Maryland. Okay. And how did they, how did they come across you? You, you applied and, and that, that's where it came out or? The army, the army is how they came across me. They, they saw my test okay. scores and um, that's how they recruited me. And what does it mean to be a cyber warrior? So back when I started, um, it was basically intercepting our adversaries' communications through satellites, um, mainly cell phone towers. And I would collect these things just straight out of the air, and then I would decrypt the messages, and then I would report on that information. And um, that's what led into what's called modern-day cybersecurity. Um, originally, it was signals intelligence. This is kind of what we call it here in the United States. Uh, Signals intelligence has come a long way since it was called signals intelligence. I'll tell you that. The uh, so okay, so you are you, you're in the army. You're 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 um, spying on people and creating intelligence reports. Then you leave the army. I guess your career is over, and you get into the field of technology. How did you get into Light Rider? Tell us a little bit about how that started and and how you landed on the Get a Grip on Lighting podcast. Okay, great. Yeah, so prior to leaving the Army, I did multiple deployments. I uh, spent about six months in Iraq, a few months in Afghanistan, and about three years in Korea. So when I was in Iraq, I, I saw firsthand devastation of, you know, kinetic or normal um, warfare. Um, but I was the first person to integrate cyber warfare into the mix. And this was in 2008, 2009 timeframe. And because of my experience there, I had a kind of an unconventional um, outlook on, you know, how to stop adversaries from collecting our information um, and how to steal theirs. So once I separated from the Army, I started a company called Vore Technology. Uh, within five years, we became the largest defense contractor, small business contractor at the National Security Agency, the NSA. Um, and I saw everything at the agency. So at the agency, they had quantum computers and I had I got an opportunity to work with those. They were pretty amazing. Um, and they were testing Li-Fi systems, very, very early tests. Um, and I got to see all that stuff. So that's how I developed our solution today. It's just from all that experience, I was able to create our quantum Li-Fi solution. Um, and with so for, for Light Rider, it's pretty interesting. We we had a. Um, uh, prime contract working at the White House uh, protecting the president's communications. Um, and we were we had a 
a task to develop a 100% secure communications for Air Force One. And that's when I got really heavy into the quantum. I invested a lot of money into it. And we were using quantum, um, basically lasers to send information to and from Air Force One. And, uh, and it, it popped up in my mind one day, why can't we just do this with normal lights? Why can't we do something similar to this with normal light bulbs? And that's when I created light router technology. Um, and in 2019, I spun that away from my government contracting firm and I started a pure play commercial startup on providing quantum communications or quantum messages through the light bulbs. And I suppose you gentlemen want to know how we do that. Do you want to know how we do it? <laughs> oh, we're going to get into that. Yeah. Well, before we okay. do that, what happened to what happened to the Vortec company that you had? I still have it. I still have it. So oh. basically, the profits from Vortec Technology are what fund the Light Router company. Got it. You know that we uh, maybe maybe you did this before us, but at the LiFi convention in 2019, Greg. Was it yeah, in France? Yeah, <laughs> Paris, we, yeah, we streamed the Get a Grip on Lighting podcast over Li-Fi, and we were claiming oh, cool. we were claiming for the first time the first Li-Fi live stream. So maybe maybe you stream some other stuff up to Air Force One before us, though. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're using light, and you're uh, there's a plane in motion traveling at whatever 600 miles per hour across the world, and you're using stations, U.S. Army stations on the ground to send secure communications to the president of the United States in the air while he's flying at 600 miles per hour. Yes, that's what we were doing back in 2017. Hmm, they beat us to it, Greg. <laughs> 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 so, okay. So then, so you're looking at this, you're like, wow, this, this technology obviously has non um, military applications. People want security as well. Is Li-Fi a uh, security play mainly? Is it what? What is the main uh, angle to it, or you just want to start expanding on on it for us, Tony? Well, yeah, Li-Fi has many advantages over traditional Wi-Fi. Um, the the largest advantage, in my opinion, is the bandwidth. So when you're using light to send communications, uh, light has unlimited bandwidth. You're never going to run out of IP addresses, or you're never going to run out of of storage, or you're never going to run out of um, the ability to to send information, and it's so quick. The speed of Li-Fi um, operates at you know over a hundred gigabytes, right? So, so basically, when you flip that light switch in your room, as fast as it takes the light to go from the bulb to your eye, that's how fast information is moving, and it's basically moving at the speed of thought. And that information can move across the planet just that fast, uh, utilizing Li-Fi. Um, so, our Li-Fi systems are compatible with the new iPhone, the LiDAR. So, you know, if you have a LiDAR phone um, or a live, LiDAR compatible phone, um, you will be able to use, you know, instantaneous communications via Li-Fi. Um, other benefits, line of sight. So from a security perspective, um, with our Li-Fi solution, if you're not in that specific light bulb, you won't be able to access the software. So at LightRider, we encrypt the software. The password to the software sits in the light bulb. So does that does that make sense, you guys? So yeah, the password is in the light bulb, and the light bulb's in your room. And if you're not underneath that light bulb, if you're not in line of sight of that light bulb, you won't be able to access the software or the hardware um, on your computer. So somebody can walk into your 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 office or your home, steal all your electronics, and they can take it to a different location, and they can plug it into a quantum computer, they can plug it into a supercomputer, but no matter what, they won't be able to access the data on those systems because they're not in the light that's in your, your specific location. What if they steal the light bulb? What if they steal the light bulb? Now, if they steal a light bulb and they steal your electronics, they steal everything, then there is a chance that they might be able to get access to your information. But how many people know that, you know, there's something in the light? Like sure. nobody knows, <laughs> you know, that, hey, there's a password in the light. Um, in addition to that, if we know that the system's been compromised, we can remotely access the light bulb and change the password. So we can access everything and change it remotely. You know, Greg, I just want to take a, like a little detour here off, if you don't mind, away from mm -hmm. lighting for a second, because... Uh... I feel like this is this um you know we're going to come back into life in a second, but the idea of the internet there was like almost like this explosion of 
um, it was almost to me like global the 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 symbol of globalization was the expanding internet around the world, and that there was this web of stuff, and you could find stuff in China, you could read the uh, People's Daily in English and translate it, you could read all this sort of stuff. But what we're starting to see now is a lot of walls going up everywhere. You know, you're starting to see. The internet was once a forest and now it's becoming like a walled garden and people want more and more walls, digital walls around their stuff. Is that what the, the, the value proposition is from you is like being able to wall yourself into your own digital garden? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I would say correct. Yeah. So you're using we're using matter or we're using. I mean, we can put we can put the the live fire solution in a in your mouse, or we can put it in shades, or we can you know use an infrared. We can put the password pretty much in anything, and we're using matter or tangible things to tether your cyber data to you or to a specific place. So yeah, just as you said, we're kind of walling in um, your know, your cyber communications or your communications, just like you would you know with. Like if you had a million dollars and you wanted to keep it safe, you would put it in a safe and, you know, you will have to someone will have to break into that safe to get access to your million dollars. So the same thing is happening with your critical information. Someone will have to break into your home or office, steal everything, and then they can access your communications. But if not, they won't be able to see anything. How does the, so, so I understand like radio signals are sending the zeros and ones out and the light is sending the zeros and ones out. Can those signals themselves be intelligent? And yes, I, they can. Ooh. Yes. So, so we're can. going into the matrix. Because basically, to me, yeah, yeah, to me, like what I've always said about Li-Fi is that what's awesome and scary about it at the same time is if they made those signals intelligent so that you're actually in the internet, right? Like now, if you're, if the lights in this studio were connected or our Li-Fi lights, I am in the internet. Like I'm going like this and there's the zeros and ones like you see in the matrix. Is that really what's happening with Li-Fi in a way? It will move in that direction very, very soon. Elon Musk has his new Neuralink technology. And with technology like that, you have massive bandwidth needs to send messages to and from people's brains. So Li-Fi is the optimal, optimal communication systems for something like that. In addition to that, virtual reality. Li-Fi is the perfect transmissions method for virtual reality. And gentlemen, what we're looking at is the creation or the start of the quantum internet. So Li-Fi is the Wi-Fi for the quantum internet. And that's why, you know, Li-Fi is so cool because it has unlimited bandwidth. So with that quantum internet, as you tap into people's brains, you know, as we're using these very sophisticated VR systems, you won't have any lagging, you won't have any delays, or you won't have any max bandwidth issues because everything's dependent upon light. What do you mean by the word quantum? Just can you define that? Because it's over used over and over throughout your website and what we're talking today, but define that, please. Um, so, so there's so the quantum physics is um, the word quantum means small, right? So when we use quantum here at Light Rider, we're using small particles of light to encrypt things. Um, so we take a particle of light and we put it. We have we have a chip, and our quantum processor has a small particle of light that's going crazy. It's spinning to the left. It's spinning to the right, um, and it superpositions. So that particle of light can spin to the left and the right at the same time. So when you look at conventional computing, you have a one and you have a zero. But when you look at quantum computing, you have a one, you have a zero, and you have a zero one. So you have this third extra bit. So with quantum systems, they're secure because you have this unstable third bit. And if you don't have that specific chip or you don't have that specific system, you can't guess what that third bit is going to be. Um, so Samsung has a new quantum galaxy cell phone. You guys can buy it today online. You can also get them in South Korea here in the United States, South Korea. They're both 5G phones. And those phones are using quantum chips to protect people getting in and out of the phone. So they're using a particle of light to secure that entire phone. So here at Light Rider, we're using particles of light to, to encrypt your computer and, and protect your communications. 
Okay, so what could possibly go wrong here? <laughs> That's it the sounds, cool part. It sounds super yeah. scary <laughs> to me, man. I mean, there's a there's like the upside, which is awesome, which is your business. Like the, these types of things have a m- momentum to them that are, in a way, non-human. But there's a side of this, like when you said yes to my question, because I've said this so many times, and everyone looks at me like I'm some kind of crazy conspiracy theorist. <laughs> I talked Mm -hmm. about it. I said entering the matrix. I said the internet's going to be everywhere. You're just going to have it all around. You're going to be in the internet. And now you're saying that that's a reality. My question to you is, can you access non-artificial light for information? Could you connect to the light from the sun, perhaps? Yes, we can. So so light rider is it, but there are scientists in China uh, that are doing exactly that. They're entangling light from distant stars, right, over in China. They're very, very advanced. So um, there's a theory called the unified energy theory that suggests that all light in our universe is connected. And that's why things like entanglement work. Uh, So with quantum entanglement, um, there's matter and there's um, and you can use light. But so like if you take certain types of crystals and you chop them in half and you take one crystal to the other side of the world and you have one here, if I send an electrical current through this crystal, it automatically it, this, the other crystal will light up on the other side of the world. I don't right? believe you. So, so, that's crazy. <laughs> no, it's serious. No, I'm 100% serious. Yeah. So that's entanglement. Um, if you you ever think about somebody, you have a thought about somebody like, oh, I haven't talked to Bob in a while. And then Bob calls you. Yes, yeah, sure. All the time. Right? That's entanglement. You ever, um, you ever walking around, you ever walking around and you feel somebody staring at you? Yeah, sure. And then you look and somebody staring at you. Yeah. That's entanglement because we're all connected. Um, and now our science is advanced enough to monitor that connection and use it for different things, for different applications to make our lives easier. Uh, dude, th- like, you speak about this like you're talking about, <laughs> you're talking about like being God or something, man. Like, <clears throat> so, okay, hang on, hang on. How could, like whenever I listen to physicists on podcasts and stuff like that, I always think uh-huh. they're like, they always transition when they talk about quantum mechanics and this sort of stuff. They always translate into the semi-spiritual somehow. They go from it like, is, yeah. they go from like talking about, you know, science and all of a sudden they're like, and all the stars are connected and it's, they were entangled and there's strings, string theories flying around. And I mean, why, what, 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 what how, when you realize that, that now you're, you're, it seems like you're tapping into the alternate reality or dark matter or something. It doesn't scare you at all? You don't feel like you're playing God with it or anything like that? I've been doing this since I was 17 years old. So to me, it's normal. It's like every day. It's really not a big deal. But you're right. We are moving into the realm of becoming, you know, pseudo gods. Um, and that's why quantum computers are so amazing. Um, one quantum computer can outpace um, all the current computers that exist on the globe today, right? I mean, these things are amazing and they're using light to process information. Whereas we've been using in the past electricity, lights on, lights off to, to, to send communications. So these quantum computers can use hundreds of thousands, if not millions of photons to you know solve very complex problems. And they are, I mean, I would say I don't. Have you guys been monitoring the UFO situation across? Yeah, the globe? like that, I don't understand. That? Like nobody's paying any attention to it. But like to me, that's so mind blowing that they're showing these pictures of these these jets or whatever the heck they are mm-hmm. doing this sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. You're not going to tell me you you've been to Area 51 now and you met the, the aliens or there. Could, could, don't blow my mind anymore, Tony. Tell me what you got though. <laughs> tell me everything. I've seen I've seen amazing things at NSA and that NSA signals intelligence is their communications intelligence is their forte. So I've seen signals come from weird places within our solar system um, that are intelligent. Like it's, it's as if somebody was sending messages. And at the agency, they've been trying to break some of those signals for 20, 30 years, and they're having issues doing it. Um, so there is intelligent life right here in our solar system. And eventually the governments will come out and let people know it. But we've been hearing about this stuff. If you think about the Bible, you think about the Quran, you think about the Torah, some, some of these ancient texts, they've been talking about beings made of light, sure. right? They've yep. been talking about intelligent beings made of light. Mm-hmm. And as I've just stated many, many times, we can store information in light. Light can be alive. So as things you know, start to develop, as our science becomes capable of measuring and analyzing light, 
we will be we will be seeing things that you know we thought were impossible um, here in the very near future. Why is it that all these innovations always come from war and military science? It's been like that since the since the you know since the creation of civilization. I, I think by my experience, what I, what I've seen is when I was in Iraq, I worked fifteen to sixteen hours a day for months, and we pushed ourselves because if we didn't push ourselves, people would die. The person sitting next to you, your family members back at home. So I would say that the most, the craziest technology comes from the military industrial um, platform because, I mean, this is life or death. And, you know, the innovation and creativity that spawns from that, from protecting people's lives, um, that's, that's why it's so advanced. Do you have any, does the NSA have any weapons related to this technology? Uh, NSA has many cyber weapons, and they, they deploy those weapons through U.S. Cybercom. Um, you can go online and, and Google some of their technologies, but quantum computers are brute force systems. So quantum computers, um, just to make it really simple, a quantum computer is like a huge calculator right now. So if you guys tried to log into your Facebook account and you put in the wrong password, Facebook will stop you, and Facebook has a, a firewall or a, um, an, like a, like a, basically a string of code that says, hey, if you don't insert the right password, we're gonna stop you guys from breaking in. So it's encryption, right? You have different types of encryption, RSA encryption, you got pseudo random encryption. So that encryption stops you from getting into Facebook. Um, but once you put in the right password, then you can get into your Facebook account. So what a quantum computer could do is once you log in three times to your Facebook account and and you, 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 you know, you put in the wrong password, the quantum computer can guess the password almost immediately. The quantum computer can guess it because the encryption tables only have about maybe 1,500 characters. And after 1,500 characters, there's gonna be a zero or a one. So the quantum computer would guess which is coming next, a zero or one, and then boom, they're into the system. How does it know that? Um, because it's running millions of calculations per second, right? So it is, it's, it's like a huge calculator. It's running millions and millions of calculations per second, faster than it would take the computer to, to, to jump to one or zero. Do you think, do you think this is um, going to lead to human happiness and prosperity, or do you think this is going to lead to destruction and war? It can go either way. I mean, it's up to humanity to decide how to use these technologies. Um, but I can tell you that there won't be any secrets here in the future, right? Because of these quantum computers, you won't be able to keep a secret anymore. So it will push people to be more honest about things, especially um, when it comes to foreign policy as nations interact with one another. Because each time each country gets a quantum computer online, they'll be able to hack into the other country's systems and see if they're telling the truth or not. So. I mean, it's a 50-50 chance. Um, history tells us that these technologies are used primarily as weapons, but no technology has existed that's anywhere near as sophisticated as a quantum system or a quantum computer. So I'm interested to see how things go. Can they hack into the nuclear weapons of the United States? Within milliseconds, within milliseconds, yes. Okay. And I, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I see this graph here, Mike. I don't know if you saw the graph on the on his website, but the patent filings for quantum technology by country. And it shows that China has done what as of 2018, 492 and US is 248. Yes. So China is more yes. than doubling ever the US. Yes. Um, and that's the US has been focused on creating these huge, expensive quantum computers for brute force attacks, right? They want to be able to hack into things. Whereas the Chinese have been focused on quantum communications, which is what Light Router does, quantum communications. And it's, it's not difficult to create quantum communications technology, right? I mean, it's, it's relatively simple. And they've been spending a lot of money on it, a lot of time. And that's why their systems are more secure than ours, because they have this quantum technology, similar to what we're selling at Light Router, that's protecting their systems. Okay, you know how you t yeah, that you talked about Musk and his brain thing, the cybernet or whatever that thing is from Terminator. Nearly, yeah. <laughs> I called it cyber. What was the well, it's Skynet? <laughs> the Skynet attachment. Skynet. <laughs> so why do they need that? Why not just connect to the human brain without that? Can't they just do it without it? Can't you just like like that's where I think it's going? No, <laughs> like forget about this implant 
Forget about the like when people say vaccines and they're gonna. It's like a microchip. I think in your world they don't need microchips. Will you just be able to connect to the brain with the light? Eventually, yes. Eventually, yes. Um, in certain, I mean, there are just gesture based systems where you can use your eyes to access information, very similar to to VR technologies that could be used. But um, I would say in the next five years, um, we'll be able to connect our thoughts, you know, to the Neuralink system or similar systems. So if you think about somebody, you'll be able to call them immediately. Like they'll they'll know you're thinking about them right then and there. Um, that technology is right over the horizon. Are we going to be able to tell the difference between what's real and what isn't? In the next 10 years, we won't be able to tell the difference. Welcome. <laughs> this is the Get a Grip on Lightning podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, you know what? Greg's, you know, usually when we're hearing this kind of information, Tony, Greg's like writing a sales proposal as we speak for some client. <laughs> I don't know what to do with this. This is crazy. Uh, so, okay. So is this even a lighting industry? Uh, you know what? Before we go there, I got to go back to these creatures of light. The Graham Hancock stuff, Magicians of the Gods and all. You read those books by that guy? When everyone I called do. him a quack and a conspiracy theorist and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, it's turning out that maybe Graham Hancock's right. They talk about the being, like all cultures, Greg, have like these stories of these beings of light. That they 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 all and it's all like somewhere between five and 20,000 years old or whatever, pre-Ice Age stuff and da 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 like, does, does the U.S. government know about this stuff and that it's real and they haven't changed history yet because they fear something? Or um, 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 what's going on with that before we move on to the next step? So, so, yeah, the U.S. government, certain groups within the U.S. government know about these things, but they, they hide their information from the president, um, the current administration, because um, they have deniability. Right. So um, NSA used to have uh, the Project, Star Project Stargate. Um, at NSA, where they used to have um, army soldiers, and they made a, a movie about it, uh, Men Who Stare at Goats. So these army soldiers would do remote viewing. So they would they would see light, they, they would fall asleep, see light, and they'll be able to collect secrets on the Russians, on the Chinese, um, on the other side of the world. And this was in 1972, and this was a real program. Um, I, I saw all the reports while I worked at NSA. So, um, you, you know, in addition to that, Angels, right? You guys have been, we've all been hearing about angels um, since we were young. And when we were, when people are children, they, a lot of people see angels. And if you read the Bible, you see things about angels. So angels are beings of light, right? So, you know, these things are, they've been in front of us since we've been born. Everything is light, right? Me speaking to you, my voice is light. When we're looking at each other, that's light. Our entire existence is based around light. So because of that, um, you know, one can only assume that light has a major role to play in our lives and possibly in our afterlives. I think when we figure this out, like I've often said that when we actually figure out what light is, like that's like the idea, that's right. it's, it's a, it's an axiomatic presupposition that we start from that the sun shines on earth and the earth revolves around the sun. Like these are presuppositions. We've mm -hmm. never actually asked ourselves scientifically, what the hell is that? Like, what is, right. why is this happening? How can this light beam, one nuclear fission reaction, hold on to an, a rock that has water on it that's whatever thousands of miles away from it and spin it? Like, how, like I, I know physicists have, like, tried to explain things with special relativity and relativity and all this sort of stuff, but they're, they, it's almost like we haven't gone that step lower and every time we go that step lower, we go into the realm of the spiritual. But there has to be a science to that spirituality. There has to be, like, there has to be a formula. Am I am I correct about that? Or you, you are correct. Um, Nikola Tesla Tesla said that if the government took ten years to study the occult, they'll move forward a thousand years with scientific technology. Um, so we are moving. Our our computer systems are advanced enough to measure light now. Um, and that's what quantum physics is really all about. It's not just light. There's quantum aspects of, of um, fire, of water. Water is a quantum system. Um, all the water that's on Earth today has been on Earth since the beginning of time, since the, be the beginning of the planet, since it's been around. So water is a quantum system. Um, but with most quantum physics laboratories or inst uh, institutions, 
they study light because light is a fundamental part of our lives. And as we continue to study it, we will move into the spiritual aspect of things. We will see more. We will find out what happens after we die. When the, when people have these near death experiences, and they say, what, what do they say when they die? When, when people have near death light. experiences, I saw the light, brother. They say, they say, there you go. There you go. They see a a bright light, and they say they they move towards the light. So what is this? Like you were saying, what's going on with light? And that's that's what we're doing over here at Light Rider. We're studying these things. Um, we're using light to make sure that you can keep a secret. We can make sure that you can have secure communications. And, you know, we're stopping things like ransomware and malware. Ransomware does not exist in the quantum world, right? So if you're talking to anybody in the quantum realm, they don't talk about ransomware. They don't care about ransomware because that's an afterthought, right? There's there's no kids or there's no hackers or there, there's no groups that are gonna be able to penetrate a quantum system. I mean, it doesn't matter how good they are. Right? What about Unless another quantum into, system? Even if they had another quantum system, they wouldn't be able to access it. They have to break into your home, steal your electronics, steal your light bulbs out your, out your walls, steal your computer, and then apply quantum systems to it. So if you don't have physical access to, to the actual system in the quantum world, you can't, you, you can't even dream of getting into it. So <laughs> that, that that's intense, man. I, I, in terms of the, the products you guys have, though, what what exactly is it that you're going to sell? Is it a fixture? Is it a bulb? Is it a, a system? What do you guys have that Light Rider is going to provide? Yeah, we have light bulbs. So we sell light bulbs, and the light bulbs have. Um, well, thank yeah, God for light that. Bulbs. Yeah, there's light bulbs. You just plug them in. I get, it, I get it now. It's a light bulb. Okay. It's a light bulb. Now, the cool thing about our bulbs is um, the light bulbs, they blink passwords and they blink information. All right. So the light bulbs are blinking faster than a human eye can see. And it's blinking a message, kind of like Morse code. And we have these uh, let's see, US. You guys remember when Wi-Fi first started, you used to have a, a thumb drive that you would plug into your computer sure. to get Internet access. That's where we are with our Wi-Fi. So the light blinks a message. It goes to the USB that's connected to your system. That message could be a password or it can be chat um, or it can be we have games. We also have games. But that's how our bulb works. We also have um, quantum network equipment that connects to your, your wireless router. And it, it quantum encrypts your wireless router. And it connects your wireless router to the light bulbs. Um, in addition to that, we have just desktop software you can download and use and send files quantum encrypted through the normal internet. Um, and you can play our games. We have very cool games. We um, we use quantum our quantum systems to generate Powerball numbers and Mega Million numbers. And people have actually been winning, um, you know, small <laughs> small prizes. So um, that's the cool thing about quantum. Um, so we specifically use quantum random number generation um, to 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 protect our clients' um, hardware, software, and to fuel the games. So it's called QRNG. And QRNG is probably the easiest application of quantum um, communications you can use in your home or in your office. And, um, you know, you'll hear people talk about quantum key distribution and all this other stuff. You don't need that stuff, right? Quantum random number generation is all you need to um, provide truly random information um, or create encryption uh, technology uh, for your clients or for yourself. So the, the, the so product you have, the product you have. To get, what kind of light bulb is it? Is it meant for a commercial user, residential, for anyone? Both. Where are you at with that? Both. Okay. Both. Yeah, we can put, we can use any standard five watt light bulb and, and connect our system to it. Um, it's really, it's really cool. It's really simple. Um, and again, um, as we just blink the lights, all we're doing is blinking the lights and we have um, our, our box. Our, our quantum Li-Fi box um, has a, a modulator on it um, that tells the light when to turn on and off, and it just blinks the light on and off, and then that sends the message to the uh, the USB thumb drive. What type of customer or end user do you see as wanting this or needing this or going to be the eventual user, mass user of it? I, I want to answer so, that question. After, <laughs> go ahead. I, I'm going to answer that question with a prediction. How's that? Okay. Go ahead. Let me hear it. I've said many times on this show, okay, over the over the last 
two or three years. So right now, the lighting industry is trying to deploy lighting controls into the into mm -hmm. all these applications and on the inside of buildings. And they're trying to create like a use case and something that will, people will want to buy. And I've always said that, that you're looking at the wrong customer. The person that whenever these technology, these technologies that are connected or information can be passed through, they never really take off until the person using them becomes the customer, uh, sorry, becomes mm -hmm. the product, the product. Mm -hmm that the person Notice. gathering the information owns, right? So like, for example, with Facebook, Face Google, or whatever you want to call all those companies, I like Face Google to take them all. Um, <laughs> you're not the customer. The Facebook user is not the customer. You're the product of Facebook that Facebook sells. So they take your information, right. they sell it to others. It's the same thing with these smart lighting systems. And I think LiFi to me is the, the golden or the holy grail of that because once the lighting is deployed, then you're, they're, they're going to be able to get information re on people's activities in a space. And that information will become increasingly more valuable to people. And so people won't pay for lights anymore. They will be sure. deployed for free by people who want the information. Do you think that's a crazy conspiracy theorist or theory or you think I'm right? No, I think you're right. I know you're right. And, and to take it a step further, our systems can measure and analyze what's happening in your room. So as light is broadcasted through the room, we can tell you exactly where some, like we can see somebody walking around in the room. Can we you can recognize see all them? the furniture. We can recognize them, right? We Can, can you can identify them. them? Like, can you identify them? You can them? identify them. That's right. We I can measure you, their Greg. body temperature, right? So as, as you, when you talk about data analytics or big data analytics, Li-Fi is the holy grail. And let's take it one step further. Again, I think I said this earlier, but Li-Fi will replace Wi-Fi, right? Wi-Fi is nothing but a two-way walkie-talkie that's connecting your computer to your Wi-Fi router. It's, I mean, it's, it's a walkie-talkie, and that's why people are hacking into them so easily. That's why ransomware is at an all-time high, is because we're using walkie-talkies. Walkie-talkies to send our critical information from point A to point B. Um, so Li-Fi will be physically installed into your room, into your office. It can be put into a lamp. It can be pretty much put into anything and it's physically tied to that room. So as the quantum internet becomes more, more advanced, more prevalent, as 5G becomes more prevalent, Li-Fi will be the only communications mechanism that can handle it. So Li-Fi is the transport for quantum information, gentlemen. That's crazy. And that's where it's all that's, headed. So Wi Fi is here to stay. It's here to stay. It's here to stay. And over the next couple of years, all you're going to hear about is Wi Fi. Um, Light Rider, we've been in this um, through my government contracting firm, Board Technology. Um, we've been doing this since 2015. Um, and we've we finally got our products completed as of March of this year. So everything's working fine. Um, we're, we're distributing it to the government and government contractors, but our main target is homes, right? We want our technology to replace Verizon. We want to replace Comcast. Instead of using those crappy internet routers, why don't you have Li-Fi systems built into your home? As you put that house up, build in your wireless, your wireless internet infrastructure into the home so people can't walk in and take it out, right? Your, your Wi-Fi is built into that house. And as a quantum internet service provider, we will own those homes, right? Those homes will be tied to our company. And that, that is going to be the basis of critical infrastructure as we move into the future, right? Critical infrastructure won't be all floppy and, and, and whimsy like it is today. Your internet will be built into the homes. Security will be built into the homes so people won't be able to use ransomware attacks and issue. People won't be able to steal your internet. Your neighbors won't be able to steal your stuff unless they're physically in your house. Does the, can the, is there intelligence in the light? Yes. Like, it, does it know something? Like, are you, do you understand what I'm asking you here now, right? Like, I'm asking you oh, if, so you're, science is, if science, you're discovering that there's, a, there's something yeah. in there that's knowledge-based or something. So the light is so powerful that we don't know, right? So every quantum system, every quantum system, each one of our boxes, each one of our devices 
is inherently artificially intelligent. Every quantum computer is intelligent because we can't predict what that computer is going to do next. We can't predict what information is going to come from that computer. So they, they're all intelligent. Now, how intelligent they are, we're not sophisticated enough to know, right? We're, we're not sophisticated. So for, for example, um, we have a, I have a quantum box. Let me go. So on, in this little box, there's a particle of light. There's a particle of light in this box. And it's, it's sitting on that chip right there, um, right here, that quantum chip. So with this box, once I turn it on, it starts producing one number. It'll produce that one number until the end of time. The number never restarts. It never repeats. It just keeps going. It will keep as long if we power it by solar, it'll keep going forever. Buildings will be put up and they'll be torn down and this box will keep running the same number, gentlemen. Right. So when I'm saying that, you know, quantum systems are intelligent, it's because they can produce information. So light can produce information so fast we can't analyze it. It's like outside of like our our realm of thought, like we we wouldn't be alive long enough to see this number repeat that's coming from this box. OK, so. But before we go to that, <laughs> Greg's telling me to close the show here, but I, I don't want to close it yet. <laughs> um, so the OK, so why would that intelligence system want humans around? Well, the system, what we're doing is we're just taking an aspect of nature, right? So this is nature we're using. Um, it's no different than, for example, when the, the trees outside, the trees outside get their information from the sun, sure. right? The sun shines on a plant and, and, and the sun's telling that plant how to grow, right? It's feed, feed it information via photosynthesis. So we're taking, we're grabbing a particle of light, no different than the light that's going to the plants, and we're harnessing its, its natural capabilities to produce one long number or to produce quantum information or to process quantum information, right? So we're just taking something that's always been here and we're using it for different applications and purposes. Yeah, yeah, I get, I, get the, I, I know what you're doing with the light rider. I'm going back to the mm. beings of light and stuff like that. The so, beings but, of light. <laughs> yeah, but if, if, there's, if there's something in there, it's like I think uh, Elon Musk described it, uh, letting the genie out of the bottle or something like that, or you know, uh, you know some, he described it in a way that was very cryptic. Are you, do you mm -hmm. have any fears about the mis, not the misuse, that's not the right word. The, do you have any fears about the large scale deployment of AI, you know, past human consciousness? Um, today, I do not. Um, I do not. You know, there, there are any artificially intelligent systems that exist on this planet today. And, and people are saying that there are, but they're not. Trust me. This box, any quantum system, this is artificially intelligent. Right. Because we don't know what it's going to do next. I don't know what it's going to do. Like I said, it can produce one number until the end of time. Just one long number. Never restarts, never resets. Two two bit systems or your normal computers, they're only operating off of a zero or a one. So we can guess the numbers. We can guess what these systems are going to do next. So to answer your question, once quantum computers are more advanced, once quantum systems are more advanced, then I'll be terrified, right? I, I won't be able to sleep at night. But for now, I don't think we have anything to worry about. <laughs> Woo! I think that's a good place to call it. Um, any any final thoughts, Tony, for the lighting guys that are just sitting in their in their cars in a parking lot, going, "What the hell?" <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say to everyone, you know, with, with cybersecurity issues. Cybersecurity, you know, is only an issue because people aren't thinking outside of the box. Um, and when it comes to lighting in the, in the lighting sector, we control the space within somebody's homes. We control the space within people's offices. So if people can think of more innovative ways to utilize the lighting to make our lives easier, whether it's through communications, um, gaming, lottery, even transportation, right? Any way you can think about using what's in your existing space to make everyone's lives easier, I would say that's a great investment of your time. And I think it will pay off here in the next couple of years.
I sure hope so. Hope not. Folks, this has been the uh, <laughs> Get a Grip on Lighting podcast. It's uh, brought to you by Starfish Some Satco, Greg. Go to satco.com, the gangsters. I don't think we should get into technology, but right now they're Wi-Fi. We'll see what happens in the future with their Starfish system. Uh, but it is a unique one that you can use for your home and have color-changing lights and cover it all. And, of course, the National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors. Go to naild.org, and you can check out Anthony Lawrence, Tony Lawrence. Man, that was a pretty wild podcast. Lightriderinc.com, spelled out L-I-G-H-T, riderinc.com. He's on social media. We'll have it all linked up on the uh, on the podcast website, so you can click and follow his crazy wild technologies, becoming pseudo-gods. For now, I'm going to go back to being a light bulb salesman. Eventually a pseudo-god. See you soon, folks. <laughs>